Today I'm going to be showing you how to figure out if your property, your distress property, is going to be a good bird deal or a bad investment. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. I am James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV. And this, this is a distressed triplex, all right? Now, I'm going to be showing you guys how to determine if this is a good deal or a bad deal, okay? Look, you see we got this triplex right here. It's in the Cleveland market. And part of it is torn down to the studs, right? You got behind the plaster and lath. All right, completely torn up here, right? We're going to need to do a full renovation on this sucker, right? Just cruising through these photos, you can see someone began the renovation process and they abandoned it after they did the demo, right? The demo, by the way, folks, is the easy part. Anybody could do the demo. Taking it apart is one thing. Putting it back together is the other. Putting it back together in a profitable way is the the toughest part right but that's what i'm here to do that's what i'm here to help you guys do right as see everything is all boarded up right this particular property was sent to me by paula from austin texas right paula you're trying to pull off the burr strategy in the cleveland market okay so you saw this bad boy in the address on this is 3692 east 147th cleveland 44120 and it's been on the market for a while 82 days, and they got it listed at 49995 Why has it been on the market so long? Is it a good investment? Is this distressed property going to be the property that can make you money using the Burr strategy, right? Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat, right? So can you buy this for $50,000 and pull off the Burr strategy and make money, Paula? No. You can't, okay? And here is why. We got a couple issues, right? The first issue is going to be the repair costs versus the ARV of this neighborhood, right? ARV of this neighborhood, it's probably like 60 grand tops for a duplex, okay? Like a turnkey-ish duplex. What you have to understand about this particular neighborhood is this is an incredibly low-income, blighted area, right? So that right there is your first major, major problem, okay? And when you're investing in real estate, folks, and you're looking at these neighborhoods, right, you can do this type of due diligence from your own home, right? You could just Google this, right? This is what you're going to see, okay? Here is your house, right? And then next door and the next door and the next door and the next door and the next door. If you looked like, you know, you got pictures of the house and you looked to the left, you see some houses, you look to the right, everything looks okay. But just pull up the Google Earth and you can see the real, the real story here, right? Vacant lot, vacant lot, vacant lot, vacant lot, vacant, 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 vacant lot, vacant, 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 vacant. Another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. Here's one, here's one, here's two, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. Here's one. Here's one. All right. See that? See all those vacant lots? This is a neighborhood in Cleveland where properties are about 100 years old. They get to the point where they're like this one. They need a ton of repair. And the people that own those houses realized it would actually cost more to repair them then they would actually be worth. So what do they do? They just tore it down. The city probably took back the lot. And you could typically buy these lots from the Cleveland Land Bank for a dollar, right? So for that reason alone, you can't pay fifty and renovate it because the renovation on that is probably fifty, sixty thousand, right? So that would put you at like a hundred and ten, which is worth well more than what the ARV of your property actually would be, right? That's one issue. Another issue is you specifically, Paul, you're, Paula, you're an out-of-state investor, right? To be an out-of-state investor, you have to get a boots-on-the-ground team to handle the renovation. Well, when you're in a distressed neighborhood like this, it's very hard to find quality contractors and property managers to take on your project, right? The risk 
for those on the ground folks is just too much the money's too small for the hassle right if i had my team doing renovations in neighborhoods this blighted all the time i would have a much higher turnover rate with my ground level employees that's not good for business right simply myself and the other large uh, legitimate companies just have uh, easier paths to profitability than doing stuff like this, right? So this would leave you with the type of uh, employees, boots on the ground people that uh, are not sophisticated, don't have processes, probably don't have the right licensure, right? You're working with fringe level employees, which just adds another layer of difficulty. Can you actually get your job completed? Maybe, maybe not. These are the kind of situations you find people like this on Craigslist, right? You pay them the deposit and maybe they do a couple jobs for you, then they just disappear, right? These are hand-to-mouth type contractors, right? So your problems, you know, are just all over the place, right? How are you going to get people to actually do the work? Even if you could get people to do the work, the work's going to be too much for the neighborhood, right? That's why you see people taking these properties and just tearing them down in this neighborhood, right? Because it don't make sense to buy it at 50, probably don't make sense to buy it at 40, probably don't make sense to buy it at 30. At least not for you, Paula. Maybe a local person uh, who can get in there with their own sweat equity could get in there and finish that renovation, right? But I'm going to go ahead and guess the reason that this renovation was stopped mid-renovation because somebody tried that and then they realized, oh, crap. The costs are getting out of control, and I'm going to be underwater on this sucker. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.